Good morning, everyone. So, today you and I are going to talk about C or M slash C++, whichever flavor you like, and Go, and the comparison between these two languages. So, if we are to have this discussion, it's important to define something. So, C and C++ have been around forever, like forever, ever. And it's actually, the, it, they are the, actually I still I think, I, say, I still think they are. They are the go-to languages for learning like system level programming and in many cases computer science as well. It, because the thing is that most of the modern world has been built on, like the modern IT world have been built on these two, on these languages. And they are still, like say in computer games programming, C++ is one of the dominant, the, the dominant languages. And they are dominant because they are, as I was saying, assist, they are system level languages, which mean, basically just means that they have extreme access to like the operating system. They are very tightly coupled to the operating system. And they can use memory, like memory management in a completely different way. And they are extremely lightweight, if you will. They can, they're very performant. And performance is very important when you do graphics rendering and so forth, which makes them ideal for computer games development. Go is also a system level language that is in more, has been developed in more recent time by Google. And it's, uh, it's very much in line with, like, if, if you think about C as being the lowest level, well, it's not the lowest level, but it, for all intents, of pur and intents and purposes, it's the lowest level language you're probably ever going to work in. And C++ is a language on top of C, like it's a new, it's a better, it has more support for nicer structures. It becomes a small, a slightly more, you know, a slightly nicer development experience for everybody working in it because C is like really, really primitive and C++ is a little bit nicer. Go is one level up on top of that as well. So it adds even a little bit more syntactic sugar to the language and it adds a little bit more of, you know, tooling and all these small luxuries that we developers kind of, well, we kind of take them for granted. At least the one, the programmers that are like starting out today, they kind of you kind of expect them to be there. Now, if you started like 10, 15 years ago, now these like these tools weren't a given. Like th this was not, you know, they they weren't really around. But if you're starting today, you kind of expect that you should have some type of package management system, and you expect there to be some type of, you know useful error messages and compile like all these different small small subtle things that make a language popular so what is good with these two languages well what's good about these languages and if we start with c so let's just say c++ for now because c is like really really primitive if you're using c you might as well use c++ what do I like about this? Well, the first and foremost thing I love about it is that this is, if you are, if you are, you are okay with the very limited tool sets and like, uh, well, limited tool sets is a strong word because you can work in this, but let's say C++ is, uh, if you're okay with it being fairly low level and primitive and there's there not being all that much of a com like the community isn't massive around it it's very specialized it's like if you compare the community of c++ to almost almost any other community you're going to f be wanting for most things unless you're in games programming of course so what's great about this is that this is the most universal language there is in theory anything that is possible to do in any programming language is possible in C++. If you know C++, you know everything. If you're good in C++, you can build everything. This, you, the entire programming world is your oyster. Like, you, there is no limit to what you can do. JavaScript is built on top, like the, the other languages, the higher level languages, such as JavaScript, for example, are built on top of this language. This language is used to run other languages. This is the best language 
for games programming or if you're into that hacking for example you want to be a hacker learn c it's the best language to be a hacker it's uh, hands down there is nothing that gives you more access than the as, as far as i know than this language so that's a very strong argument for c and it's actually funny because i've argued very long that actually you know what i would like I would love, I would really like it if C++ became a more access, accessible development experience. Because, I, I mean, I love all kinds of languages, but the thing about C++, it, it has already, it's been here for so long. It has been this mo like super powerful, amazing language. And it's actually kind of sad, I think, that this thing that has been around forever has not gotten the respect and adoption rate that it deserves and it's all down to it not being an accessible and nice experience to to work in that's it it's a pr issue it has nothing to do with the language itself like the language can do anything it's the problem is that it doesn't get like it take javascript javascript is all publicity all adoption rate everything and i kind of say that hey what you know what I would prefer it if we all worked in C++ or like if it, that had been the case. If now we're of course most of the modern front-end development and like web development needs JavaScript, but I don't see any reason why it couldn't have been the case that C++ was the language of choice. And I thought, I think that that would have been preferable. I, I really do. I would have preferred that to be the case, but that's not the world we live in. So. That brings us to Go. That's what I absolutely adore about Go. Go brings that to the table. To me, I, f I feel like Go is R and Rust in some... Like Rust as well. I'm, I'm not going to compare Go and Rust, but these two, Go, Go and Rust, they have brought us the second chance. They have basically... Do, they have done what I... what. Uh, React and Angular and so forth did for JavaScript, like, or rather for, and the functional programming, especially React. They have popularized. They are, you know, uh, they are bringing system levels, system level languages back. If that, yeah, that makes sense. I hope, and I absolutely adore it because the thing is that Go has done what I, I I've argued was lacking in C++. You have given the developers a nicer suite of tools, like the syntax has been improved so that you can actually do, like access, you have accessibility to stuff like asynchronous programming. You have a conven convenient libraries that helps you do templating, uh, so web servers, all these common things that are so, so, so standard in our everyday life. You don't have to start, like, start from absolute scratch with every single thing you want to do even route, routing and stuff like that and that's absolutely genius you have a basically a system level language in modern time it's a modern system level language and that to me is amazing it is absolutely amazing because i've actually i've actually made a few videos and i still stand by that if you are learning programming today from nothing start with go I, if you're interested in do, being able like javascript i it's a it's a close call between javascript and go i you I, I will tell you go in this video because we're talking about go versus uh, c but start with go because it's like it will let you do everything without having to go all the way down to like learning c and c plus plus so if you're a computer science major or if you're into any type, if you want to build web service, whatever you want to build, Go's got you covered. Now, when do you use one of these over the other? I will tell you right now. The one thing that I see as a drawback is that C, uh, between these two languages, is that C++, I think that Go is a better choice in general than C++ because C++ is still, it's, it's so behind the curve. It's more power, it's the most powerful thing you can possibly work in, but it's not that nice of a development experience in general, and it's not caught up to a lot of the stuff that's happening in the modern development world, with one exception, with one really big exception, as far as I know. 
it is the language for games development. You can do, the, of course you can do games development in other languages, but C++ most likely has the biggest community, the most amount of libraries, etc, etc, because it's been doing it for a very long time. Go, not so much. Go is, it, it's, that's the, that's the trade-off. Go is of younger languages, so it doesn't have as many packages and libraries and people who have been, you know, creating all these convenient tools that you can use in order to speed up your own development. But it is a better experience, and I honestly think that if Google plays their, play, play this right, Go can actually become one of, you know, you know, it can become a modern day C++. And that would be absolutely amazing because I would love to get into games programming and all that awesome stuff if we could just bring things up to a higher level. And that can either happen through Go becoming like more and more developed or C++ catching up to everybody else. So yeah, hopefully that's what you that's what's useful to you.